What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be showing you one of my favorite lures to use or my favorite fishing techniques to use during the winter season for bass fishing and that is going to be the drop shot setup. So let's go ahead and talk a little more about this thing. Now this is a technique that you can use year round but it works especially well right now because the cold temperatures are starting to slow down fish and you need a technique to work with those slower fish and that is what the drop shot comes in handy for. So talking about the weights, there are multiple styles of weights that you can use. There are ball weights, there are teardrop weights, and then there is the stick weight, which is more of a stealth type of weight that you can work in and out of vertical structure. The balls and the teardrops work a little bit better in and out of gravel or rocky areas. And due to the structure we have here in Texas, that is why we are leaning towards the stealthy straight style weight today. Now you can use various types of hooks as well. Today we are gonna be using a one-aught hook. I have two different types of hooks in front of me that are two of my favorite types. But if you're not comfortable with either one of these brands, just make sure you're looking for an offset or an octopus style hook. That allows the hook to sit out right so you can secure that hook set. Now as crazy as it sounds, you can also use a EWG hook to rig these things weedless, but we are not gonna be messing with that today. Now to tie this rig, it's pretty simple. You tie a polymer knot onto your hook with about a 12 inch tagline hanging off. Once you've done that, you reinsert that tagline back into the hook and pull it down so it sits straight up. This will assure that the hook sits straight up when the weight is down at the base. Now choose a depth to your liking, clip on your weight, trim your tag if needed, and you're all set. It's that simple, guys. And now that we've kind of talked about the basics and gone over everything that you probably need to know, let's get out there on the water and show you how to use this setup. All right, guys, we've officially made it out here to our friendly little neighborhood pond behind me. I'm going to talk about the setup real quick. We got a Crixus spin rod right here. This is a medium setup. This is a six foot six two piece. So it's basically my two piece rod that I like to keep in my car ready to go. And we have my Zephyr spin reel with that thing. We got 15 pound braid leading up to, I believe, eight pound fluorocarbon. Um, it's just kind of like a lighter, finessier setup. That's typically how I like to fish it. I didn't really want to tell you guys how to use it or what to use it with because there's so many different styles and ways to fish the drop shot setup, but typically I like to finesse fish with it. So now that we've talked about the rod, how to use it, how to set it up, let's start fishing and show you guys all about this rig. All right, we'll see how this spot does for starters and we might have to swap out. It looks pretty uh, stagnant and uh, just not a lot of movement today. But anyway, set up. We are rocking a little Biospawn Plasma tail on there. I have a few other different types of soft plastic, but right now that is what we're going with. And then that basic one out hook with a 3 16 of an ounce drop shot straight weight. Once again, we got 15 pound braid leading up to that eight pound fluorocarbon leader. So we have a little bit more of a finessier touch. And uh, what I typically like to do is just get these things out there. Always keep my line straight and vertical and make sure that that lure stays upright and that uh, that worm kind of wiggles nice and dandy in that strike zone. On top of that, every now and again, I'll kind of give it a little fidget, a little move, a little twitch while it's just sitting there. And that allows that tail to just kind of tickle around and honestly, it irritates those fish into just really wanting to bite when they're uh, slow and finessey during these winter seasons like they are right now. Now there's multiple styles of baits you can use. Once again, we are just rocking this little plasma tail, but you can use so many different types of, oh, oh, we got bit, we got bit, we got hammered actually. We got bit right here at the edge. That was weird. So there's multiple styles, like I was trying to say, of uh, baits you can use. A lot of times flukes or like paddle tail style baits work really well too. And if you don't like hopping these things, as crazy as it sounds, you can really just reel them in pretty slowly once they hit the bottom. It allows that uh, that worm to sit in that strike zone for a fairly long time. Got to be careful with this spot. I want to make sure my drag's set well enough to set the hook but not pop off with that eight pound line. There are definitely some good fish here, but very finicky area. That is for sure. Let's try it right here under this bridge real quick. That was a fish. Ooh. I might be hanging out in that area. I see a shadow of a bass. Will he go for it? I'm not too sure. We'll have to see. Yep, yeah, he went for it. Yep, 
Alright guys, just like that. Let's go. That is a lot better fish than I thought it was. Calm down buddy, calm down. I'm gonna get you it released real quick and easy. There we go, man. Barely pin that guy on the roof of the mouth. That is why I have these really sharp hooks with this offset hook set like I was trying to tell you guys. You have to have an offset if you want to secure right, secure nice and easy. That is what we did right there, guys. Here we go, first little plump fish of the day. Actually a lot warmer than I thought they were in there. So water temperatures probably have not turned yet. I'm gonna get this guy back in there so he's not freezing out here. It's about 40 degrees outside and uh, I'd say the water temperature is probably somewhere in the 50s, 60s maybe. That was fairly warm. There we go, guys. First fish though, just like that. Super easy to work these things too when you do kind of see a fish because you can really drag it towards that that fish, leave it in that strike zone, and just kind of dangle that tail right in there and uh, get him to bite. I think this color works fairly well too because we just got that chartreuse that pops with the overcast and then you got that purplish blue flake color right there. So first fish of the day, complete, man. Let's keep it going. So let's go ahead and get another one down in there. Let it just dangle, who knows? You felt that one, dump it right away and take off with it. And that's why I like to work this lighter line and kind of finesse fish it because these fish are very finicky. When they do hit it, it's either very subtle or it's one of those things where uh, they run off with it and you never even notice it until your line starts drifting. Let's keep it walking around this spot, see if we can find something else. Oh my goodness, I think I just saw a school of them up against this wall right here. Let's see if we can slowly dangle this drop shot towards them. This is what finesse fishing 101 is all about. You have to have something that's slow and steady enough to attract them, but not spook them. Let's see if we have the right technique right here. Oh, we got hammered. Oh, we got hammered by something. I can't see. Can't see from this edge. It's underneath. It's underneath. Oh, yes. Yes, it's another little bass. Little guy. There was a few big ones in there. Sadly, we got the little one, but just like that, man. Right there on the edge of this bridge, they are stacked up. There we go. Second fish of the day. Another little guy, but there's some big ones looking at it. I'm going to get him back in the water and see if we can get another one. Nice catch and release. Let's see if we can get some more dangling this thing, man. I didn't think it was going to work this well at this spot because uh, it tends to be very high pressure here, but I might have found the secret sauce to use here. Alright, let's get another one of these bad boys on there. It's not the same color, but it's the same bait. That plasma tail has a little air pocket in the tail, which allows it to float up a little bit more upright, give it that nice little dance that it has. So that's why I like throwing these things. Like I said, there's tons of different baits you can use, but it's just one of my favorite ones to throw now where can I go and fish before my hands freeze to death let's try by this little stump usually pretty good over here Highly doubt there's going to be any fish over here because it's cold running water, but we're going to give it a few dangles over here. You never really know. Maybe the little spunky guys are over here getting a little cool down. Oh yeah, something's over there. <laughs> oh man, I just said we might not get anything. First cast. There we go. Little tiny guy hanging out underneath the water looking for a free meal. Calm down, buddy. This is definitely smallest fish of the day but i'll take every single one we can get during this cold season hands are getting really cold out here there we go another little guy another good guy back in the water you go buddy kind of got that line tangled up but we got him untangled let's uh i guess get back over there in that little water area who knows there might be another one yeah hammered like as soon as it hit the Yep, yep, there's another one. They're in there. Little dinks are in there. Little dinks are in there. We found the dink spot. <laughs> Take it, man. Every fish I can get is a fun fish. Guys, they might be a little, but we're definitely finding them all of a sudden. 
There goes number four. Big old bass over here. I think I maybe change up the presentation. -y. Oh, that's another one. A little bass. Whew. Wasn't expecting that one. I think I'm changing on the presentation and going with the big worm, but that's number five right there, guys. I think that might do it for the day. I'm pretty exhausted. I'm getting pretty cold out here. Not a lot of big guys, but we're catching fish for sure. All right, guys, after our last few catches, I think that is gonna be it for today. It's been fun out here, but it is getting really, really cold. We've definitely found the bite on this drop shot. And my main goal was to get out here, not just show you about this technique, but show you how I like to use it, especially while I'm bank fishing. So hopefully you got a good understanding. Hopefully you got a good idea. I think five bass is good for an hour of fishing. One thing I will always recommend is using probably like a medium rod. You want something with a little bit slower action. So when the fish do bite, has a nice subtle hook set and you're not just ripping it out of their mouths. Um, on top of that, smaller hooks tend to work a little bit better for my part. And then make sure you're getting those offset hooks as well. Uh, but yeah, that's going to be it for today. Hopefully you learned a lot about drop shot setups. If you did enjoy the video, make sure you hit that thumbs up and subscribe button. And we'll catch you guys in our next adventure. Thanks for watching. Peace.